All right, sad face, we're leaving Colorado. But uh, um, we're on our way through again to Niagara Falls. Uh, gonna keep driving on through to Buffalo. Um, Molly and Cleo are buckled in in the back, which is good. Yeah, we haven't really decided on our way from here. We just knew we were going to stop in Vegas and in Colorado somewhere. And now we've done both of those things. So we're tossing up between Kansas and Nebraska. And, like, really, it's about 23 hours of driving straight shot from here to our final destination. So we've got about two or three more stops, maybe. Um, but, yeah, I guess you'll find out in the next 30 seconds or so where we decided we'd stop. got some feedback from you guys that you're not a big fan of just watching the road which is fair enough um, and so after we left Denver uh, and we're almost at the border of Colorado and whatever the next state is what is it Kansas there we go uh, we're almost at the border of that but after Denver there's pretty much fuck all um, in terms of landscape like it's just big wide open spaces uh, so in this video we're gonna switch the camera around now after Denver so you don't just have to see all the sweeping open plains uh, and you're going to watch us have a couple of poli uh, like political chats or chats about politics in America versus Australia. As always let me know if you um, if you like what you see. Look at these facts that we know what can we sort of interpret from there and that's that's the process of being a historian you know people people do entire degrees talking about certain Roman leaders and the, the implications of their rule on various parts of the world, like butterfly effect wise, you know. Um, he just does similar things with early settler diary entries and early settler um, primary sources and stuff. So that, you know, like, I mean, if, if, if your story, if your historical story or your, your agenda as a historian doesn't hold up to well, maybe things were a bit different. Let's imagine they were, and put ourselves in this perspective now. Um, and if it doesn't hold up against that, then it's not really a, a, a historic theory worth its salt, you know. And, um, and Bruce says, well, like, if we... It, like, it's a perfect passage that he talks about in a, in a diary of I can't remember who it was. It might be Charles Sturt. But I can't remember. I don't think it's Charles Sturt. But he, yeah, there's this, this white dude that's walking along the river, and he comes across an Aboriginal man uh, fishing. Right? And the man is fishing in a way that uh, we're going to say it's Charles Sturt because uh, you know that's, that it's easier to refer to him. But solves Charles if it wasn't uh, it wasn't you. But like Charles is walking along and he sees his Aboriginal man fishing in a way that he's not seen anyone fish before in his entire life. The Aboriginal man has this, for, for lack of a better word, um, a, a machine, you know what I mean? Like, obviously there are no bells and whistles and there's no fucking, it's not like covered in grease or whatever, but like, uh, through wood and vine, this man is like standing there in waist deep water on the bank of the river, uh, and he's got this contraption, right, which 
which is basically like a dam across the fucking river um, with certain sized holes in the wall and a noose on a peg uh, in the water. And when a certain fish of a certain size swims through a certain hole, the current of the water or the movement of that water in that hole or in that particular spot would um, would like get the get the noose off the peg under the water, fling up, catch the fish, throw the fish out of the water into a bucket that the Aboriginal man was standing next to, and all he'd have to do is grab the grab the bit of uh, line or rope or whatever it was. Undo it from the fish, chuck it into, chuck it back onto the uh, the peg thing under the water, and then boom! Like that's that's him fishing, you know? Like it's a very it was, uh, like a, a fishing contraption or a fishing machine in essence. And 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 Charles Sturt or whoever it was uh, wrote in his uh, journal entry like, you know, I, I've heard about the laziness of the blacks, but seeing him fish in such a way only confirmed it for me. And, and Bruce, like, talks about shifting your perspective, you know. And if you shift your perspective a tiny little bit there from, oh, I'd heard Aboriginal people were lazy, this confirms it, to, oh, Aboriginal people are, are ingenious and they're, they're, you know, like, it's a, like, that's industry. That's a, you know, like, that's, anyway, like, it's, it's about, yeah, the perspective and shifting that perspective based on early settler diary entries. Now, they say Aboriginal Australia, there were over 200 different variations of Aboriginal communities um, that each had their own customs and, and, and language and, and laws and all that sort of stuff, you know. So, bumping them all in together as one collective is a bit offensive. Um, or would be, I imagine, you know what I mean? That's just like saying, like, oh, Native, Native Americans and fucking, you know, they, they make handcraft a jewellery or something. And it's like, yeah, well, some of them might, but other ones might not. Go back. 
bad shit, but I'm talking about like, like for example, like no, and I'm not gonna get into that right now. But like, yeah, yeah. there is a there is a a, a a species of liberals here in the United States that make every fucking Democrat look bad. Yeah, they are fucking like okay. There's right wing extremists, and I hate people say there's no such thing as left. Yes, the fuck there are. Yeah, not in a sense of um, oppression. But in a sense of making things into a circus where people don't take it seriously, they think yeah. if it's just like a look or a style, like they say too, like imitation is a sincere form of flattery or whatever. Yeah. And we all are like a melting pot. Think- we live in a melting pot area. Yeah. Right? It's so just- it's like as long as you're not benefiting off it. Alright guys, so here we are at a rest stop in Nebraska. Uh, this was going to be two separate videos, but now it's just the one because I've been getting a bit of feedback that you guys don't like just watching the road, uh, which is fair enough because I haven't really been having a lot of fun doing it either. Um, but we went from Fruta to Denver and we're now going to be somewhere in Nebraska where we finish up tonight. Um, but we flipped the camera once we started driving through Nebraska and filmed us chatting, so there's going to be a lot of time and a lot of that in this video as well uh, because there's fuck all of anything in Nebraska. Um, it's a very open plains sort of state um, and it, it you'll be bored if you just watch all of that. So stay tuned, I hope you enjoy. Please subscribe to the channel just down there around here somewhere just below Shannon at the minute. Uh, please subscribe, it helps us out heaps. Share it if you can. Uh, I hope you enjoy the video. So we're um, stopped in some random place in Nebraska uh, because there was tornado warnings. Hopefully you can hear me and not the wind. Um, but yeah, so we're not allowed to keep driving. Uh, according to Shannon and my mum and a bunch of other mates that have seen the movie Twister. Um, but yeah, this is, this is the amount of trucks that have also been, been stopped.